video, I'm going to talk about using Twitter for trade signals. And man, uh, early 2017, when I got into altcoins, the Twitter crypto community space was an entirely different space. It was, there wasn't that many OG users that tweeted a lot all the time. Um, so it was a much more tight knit internet community. And it was also a lot more fun to be honest with you. Uh, there was, uh, was, uh, a lot of people were uh, familiar with the different accounts on there. There were so many now that it's hard to keep track of everyone. Um, but anyway, the 2017 crypto community was really unique. And not only was it unique, it was usable for trade signals. Uh, now, I mean, if you're, if you have a portfolio, it's probably a good idea to follow the official accounts for each of the coins in your portfolio, just to see, uh, if there's any, uh, news that you should be aware of and that sort of thing. Uh, and then also great for networking. If you want to go to meetups, got me, uh, I need to break this out and actually wear it sometime. My Rotterdam uh, Verge Currency meetup when I was uh, the last time I was out in the Netherlands uh, for Verge Currency meetup. I've, I've been to two Verge Currency meetups in the Netherlands actually. Um, anyway, so it's good to follow for news. The, and you mo there, there might be some community members and stuff that you might want to follow also. Um, if you're really into a specific cryptocurrency, however, Twitter itself is not as good anymore as it used to be for trade signals. Uh, and I'll tell you how I used to use it in 2017. And I used to be successful using it this way in 2017 when there was far, far, far fewer. I'm talking about just like a few percent of how many accounts are tweeting nowadays about crypto. Um, maybe even less than that, or how many t were tweeting about crypto in 2017. And so you could search a hashtag for any cryptocurrency. And also in 2017, if you looked at all the coins on Bittrex, a lot of them didn't have websites or didn't have functioning websites or websites were garbage. Like back then, like not an exaggeration, one of the standards for deciding whether to buy a crypto or not, uh, and it wasn't just me that used this as a, uh, as a, a signal back then just to show you how much more primitive tr crypto trader crypto trading was back then by the way just quick domain shout out pro trade dot tools anyway uh type that into your browser uh but back then like literally one of the things that was a good indicator whether whether to buy or not was if a cryptocurrency had a website at all if the website had been updated and if it was a modern website that was literally one of the standards where you're like oh wow this project is a good project because a lot of the coins at that time uh bitcoin had a few years of a downtrend uh before it started uh gaining traction again and so a lot of those altcoin projects were as good as abandoned for a while so it was a really interesting space uh, and one of the things that you could do was you could just search the cash tag or a hashtag for a name of a cryptocurrency and you would see either tweets by random users that were, if you, you could see if there was momentum gaining, if there was something that usually didn't have many tweets about it. I mean, that's how I got into XVG. I saw that there was rarely any tweets about it and a lot of them, uh, were negative, uh, partially just because it used to be called Dogecoin Dark before it rebranded the Verge Currency, and people, uh, jokes on them now because they thought it was silly that they had originally called themselves Dogecoin Dark, and that was before the massive, uh, 2021, uh, Dogecoin pump, so jokes on them, uh, but anyway, I, that, that was one of the reasons I started promoting XVG as XVG Whale because I was uh, creating memes and content in that space when there wasn't uh, really that many people actively doing that. There were some people that were part of the Verge community a lot longer than I had been and, and were somewhat active on social media, but not, not constantly posting stuff and uh, creating some of the type of uh, promo materials that are now more common although it needs another meme wave. Um, 
But back on topic, you could just search a cash tag or hashtag mid early 2017 on crypto Twitter and you would see somebody post some news about it, and whether it was just some sort of update development from the Bitcoin talk thread or if it was the news from the official uh, cryptocurrency page or even if it was sort of just somebody hyping it up. If you just traded based on those signals uh, from looking at a hashtag and you see a tweet that was posted like an hour before and it sounded like something juicy and good uh, and you bought that crypto, a lot of the times your trades would win back in mid-2017. That's just how the market space was. And uh, I went on from what I, I had an account before my XVG well account in Avcoin Trader where I talked about a bunch of different cryptos and I went on from there. Uh, to my XVG account, and then people are eventually started using my tweets as trade uh, signals, and there would sometimes be massive fluctuations. Uh, the the most ever was in 2000, not the most ever in terms of market cap or highest price, but the most ever change that I, that happened from one of my tweets. Uh, it was a tweet and YouTube video combo when I was in China in uh, 2018, uh, I posted uh, some news and uh, about an opportunity uh, to work with a game developer in China. And I show you not based on the little press release that I did separate from the reverse currency team, uh, the market cap sh shifted by $100 million and shift hundred million dollars for my money that's for sure uh however did uh and twitter still to a degree is decent for getting trades signals uh but really there's a lot more to it now is a lot of times the altcoin markets and even bitcoin doesn't react directly in price to news as much as it used to uh, and that's a really a big change major change from when i got into the cryptocurrency space uh, probably because a lot of people started doing the same sort of thing and making the same sort of trades. Uh, so things changed and it could potentially change again. Uh, but this is one of the reasons I recommend using a service like that, uh, the TJAI. You can uh, type in protrade.tools into your browser. It's fun to type in. Give it a try. Check it out. Uh, and honestly, I think you're a fool if you don't sign up to it. Uh, you might be like, oh, this looks uh, spammy. I'm not going to sign up to this. But it's all it is is it gives you trade suggestions daily, and their trade suggestions are performing at 65 to 75% win rate. Those are the only two numbers that really matter to me in regards to the sales pitch for the TJAI because trading with the 65% 75% win rate, you can continue to grow. Uh, your money on a regular basis and you can use the odds they have odds on there uh, of giving you a pretty much a that's a bit of risk reward ratio or how much how risky or not risky it is so if you just want to take the safest trades on there and go with that uh, because you really want to want to make sure you're trading in a way that best protects you from risk you can do that you're a little bit riskier uh, than there are. Um, uh, you can you can try the ones that are a little bit higher risk rated. Um, anyway, uh, and that if you use across the board, that 65 to 75 percent win rate is rated for across the board for all their trades. So if you wanted to just go ham, I suggest start with a few uh, per day or a few per week. Uh, your first month, then up it from there and uh, see how you do. Uh, but their statistical average is ahead of the market, and that is pretty much the golden goose, the golden, uh, the the holy grail of uh, trading in the crypto space is finding a a system that works for you in regards to uh, making trades that are profitable on a regular basis. And uh, a lot of people are complacent this year, twenty twenty one. Uh, because there's been so much increases in the crypto markets that there are people that have been able to trade profitably, profitably without knowing what they're doing 
without setting targets, without setting stop losses. And I was that type of trader uh, back in 2017. Uh, but those people are, if they still don't know what they're doing and there's a market shift, uh, that they could lose all their money if they're not using uh, the type of tools that are necessary to really protect yourself for long term, uh, growing your money, uh, trading crypto. And again, give it a try. Type it in your browser protrade.tools and this video is the video why people get into altcoins why it makes sense why there's more flexibility and more options once you get into altcoins thank you for watching